So this is part two of a two-part video on building a better integrator and specifically we want to look at the Runga Kutta family of integrators. If you haven't watched the previous video, go back and watch that now. Uh, there is a link to it below and if you've come from there you should recognize that the equations 10 and 11 that I've written here are just copied from the previous video. And what we did then, we decided that in order to build a better integrator so that we can advance the solution from y at time t to y at time t plus 1, what we want to do is find a better approximation of the average slope. And we do that using a Taylor series expansion. And what we've done is we've included in general the first four terms. Let me change stylus here. We've included the first four terms, actually five terms because we've included that one, but we've included the terms up to the fourth order. Any terms of order 5 and greater, meaning delta t to the power of 5 and greater, we ignore. Um, what we'd like to do in the case of Runge Kutta is map that function to another function where we're going to model the average slope as a function of weights times k's. And the k's are slopes evaluated at different points in the interval. So in the first case, we've got g, into, uh, g and its derivatives, second, third derivatives, evaluated at the start of the interval, point t. Here, the ki's are just g, but g evaluated at points elsewhere in the interval, not just at time equals t. Okay, and you'll see that in a little bit, and it will make more sense. So examining first the case of the runge kutta first stage, or one stage, stage one integrator, this is actually something we've seen before, but I just wanted to show you so you get the feel for what we're doing here. In this case, we decide that all the terms of order delta t squared, the second order terms and higher, are negligible. They're approximately equal to zero. And we will approximate the slope with just a first order approximation, namely g, which is the slope of y, at the start of the interval. This is exactly what we did before. You should be able to tell by inspection that a1 is just equal to 1, and that k1 is just equal to g here at time t. So the way we write it is that y1 is equal to delta t times k1, where the average slope is just approximated as k1. And in this case, k1 is simply g, the slope of y, it's g, evaluated at the start of the interval. Why g? Because remember the very start of the previous video, we said that y dot was equal to g. And I told you, don't forget, g is the slope of y. So when you see g, just be thinking about the slopes. And all that we're going to discuss in this video is how to find a better average slope. So this is known as forward Euler. It's the only solution for the RK1 family, I would say, of integrators. There is only one solution. It's not a family. And it's first order accurate, meaning whatever the size of your step is, that's the order of the accuracy. If delta t is 0.1, it's accurate to 0.1. If delta t is 0.01, it's accurate to 0.01. That's the Runga Kutta one. And the other thing, I wanted to give a shout out to Peter Hoffman, who in the previous video had mentioned that the forward Euler for, for no damping is actually mildly unstable. I'll demonstrate this again in the next video, but he's exactly right. And this is more to the point of why we would like something that's a little bit more accurate and more stable. And this is where this video is going. And since I believe in trying to visualize things, it's best for understanding, let's just draw a diagram of what this is doing, how we integrate here. We've got some function y of t, and we know its value at some time t sub i, we know its value to be y sub t, it's a vector. And in order to find its value here, t sub i plus one, what we've done is we've used the linear approximation where we take the slope at the start of the interval there, and we've said that we're going to take a whole step using that slope and we're going to end up here and therefore this is our approximation of y t plus 1. Is it a good approximation? Well, <laughs> not in this drawing it isn't, but we know that as time goes to zero, this is going to get more and more accurate. First order in delta t because we've, we've thrown away all the higher order terms. So this integrator is exactly first order accurate in T. Moving forward now to the Runge-Kutta 2 integrator, here's what we find. 
So we proceed much the same way as we did with Runga Kutta 1, except in this case we're including the first two terms in the slope, and we're discarding everything that's of order delta t3 and higher. So it's a second order accurate integrator because we've used the exact two, uh, first two order terms that the Taylor series expansion tells us to use. And we want to approximate this, instead of using g and its derivative, we would like to approximate it with g and then g evaluated somewhere else at the interval. I remind you that the sum of all the weights is equal to 1. And what we find when solving for the, the weights and, and for the k1s is instead of there just being one solution, this system is underspecified, so there's a family of solutions. I'm going to present just two of them for now, and they're two of the most common used ones. You might already be familiar with them. And these two methods are the midpoint method and Huyn's method. I assume I'm pronouncing that correctly. If, if not, someone can correct me. In the case of the midpoint method, we say that the average slope is given by K2. And the way that, the way that we find K2 is we first find K1, which exactly as before, we take the slope at the start of the interval. And then in order to find K2, we now just march half a step, t plus delta t over 2. So unlike the RK1 method where we took the K1 slope and we marched a whole interval, now we're going to march forward just half an interval. We're going to use that K1 slope and the half the time step to figure out where we would have been in at, at that, based on that approximation, where we would have ended up. And then we're going to take the slope at that point. So I'm going to try and draw it here for you got axes like this, we've got some function y of t, we're at time step t sub i, at which the value we know is y sub t, which is a vector, and we want to advance it to the next time step t sub i plus 1. And what we want to do is hopefully get to this value here. Oh, what did I do in red? Let's try it in black. This value here, y, t, plus 1. Okay, and we start off with the uh, Runga Kutta second method, the second order, the exact same way as we start out with the first. We find the slope here at t, t sub i. Okay, and instead of marching a full time step with it, this time we only march half a time step. So let's just assume this is the middle, t plus delta t over 2, where obviously this whole time step is delta t again. And then this says, hey, find k1 as before, and then in order to find k2, let's march halfway across the time step, and we'll assume that the y value for the purpose of finding k2, we'll assume that the system has gone from y yt to yt plus this little bit, where much the same way as we did in the RK1 method, we've used the slope at the start at time equals t, but this time we've only stepped half a step with it. Then what we do is we find the slope as a result of that approximation, and then that's the slope that we use. So we're almost going to take half a step here. We're going to find a slope. Let me just do it in color. Maybe it's a little bit clearer. This red is actually slope k1. And then let's just say green here. We, we're going to get a better approximation of k by using the slope at the midpoint. And then that k2 is precisely what we use as the average slope. As an alternative, what Hoyne's method says is, yeah, we use the same k1, exactly the same as, as for the midpoint method, only this time we step a whole step with that k1, t plus delta t, and we assume the slope is for the purpose of, of changing uh, y, we assume the slope is k1. But then what we do is, unlike the RK1 method where we would have only used k1, now we're actually taking the average of k1 and k2. And either one of these methods, these two methods, is second order accurate. You'll find in the case of Hoyne's method, you've got some extra floating point calculations here, but I believe it's actually slightly more accurate. But then it's a little bit more CPU intensive. So that's all I wanted to say about the second order, but hopefully you're seeing that it's kind of taking the first order approximation and then improving upon it. That's the idea here.
Okay, so turning the page, we're going to have a look now at the RK4 method, also known as the classical Runge-Kutta. So now that you've seen RK1 and RK2, you should be a little bit more comfortable now with what we're doing in RK4. Principle is exactly the same. The math is a little bit more complicated. But we start off with this form of the Taylor series approximation, now including all five terms, or the first five terms. Anything of order delta t to the five and higher order, we're going to eliminate. And we're going to approximate it with a runge kutta integrator that looks like the following. As once again, the sum of all the weights is equal to one. And I'm not going to go through the math. I'll present the answers to you. It gets very, very tedious, this. It's mostly just algebra, a little bit of calculus. But the solution is as follows. Y sub t plus 1 is y sub t plus delta t times this average slope. Then what I did is I took a sixth out as a common factor. And what we find is that the average slope to be used for the RK4 integrator uses four different values of g, which are numbered k1, k2, k3, and k4. These are weighted on a 1, 2, 2, 1 ratio. We're dividing by 6 so that we've normalized it. But this is how we construct the weights. All that needs to be done now is to present to you exactly how we, we find g, how we calculate it at the interval. But the important thing is that once we found g, in order to find the average slope, the average of all those g's, that is the formula. So looking at the g's, or the k's, uh, first of all, we're going to find g at the start of the interval. That's k1. That's exactly the same as we've done for rk1 and rk2. Then we're going to find k2 by finding, taking half a time step using the k1 slope. We did this exactly in the midpoint method. And then we get k2. That's exactly the same as the midpoint method. Now what we do that's different is we iterate again. We take the step again, half a step. But this time, instead of using k1 as our slope, we use k2 as our slope. So we take the same half a step, but we use k2, which is a better approximation than k1, to suggest this is the state of the system at the midpoint. Based on that, we get another approximation, k3, a better approximation at the midpoint. And then we use that slope, k3, to take a full step. So the final thing is to take a full step using the best known slope we have at that point, which is k3. And this is how we get k1, k2, k3, and k4. And then we combine it and take a step exactly as shown in equation 30. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it because I know that's always the easiest way to visualize it. But this is not the easiest one to draw, so bear with me. I have a set of axes. We have a function y of t that looks something like this. We want to advance the system from t sub i, where it's at a known state of y sub t. And we want to advance that to t sub i plus 1. Right, this is time, and this is y of t. And the first thing we do, like we've done all along, is we find the slope here. This is k1. Using that slope, we take half a time step, just like we did in the midpoint method. And using that, we'll get k2. I'm going to do that in purple, k2. Then what we do is we take that step again. This, I should say, is t plus delta t over 2. We take that half step again using k2 slope, which we think is a better approximation to get to that half a time step. Then using that, we take, oh, I'm going to do it in green. We find as a result of that K3. And then finally, we take the full time step using K3, which takes us to, let's say, here. And then let's do that one in blue or yellow. This is K4. And then what we do is using K1, K2, K3, K4, we combine it to figure out how to take our step and how to advance from yt to yt plus 1. Now, I hope that doesn't sound overly complicated. I realize it's a lot I've just thrown at you. And if you're like I am, the minute you see it implemented in a code, you're going to be able to come back to this and it's going to make a lot more sense. 
So that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to take exactly this, this method of finding k, and this method of combining the k's once we found it. And I'm going to show you how to take our existing code that we did a few videos ago, and we're going to now implement the Runga Kutta integrator into that same piece of code. We'll be able to compare how it ran before in terms of the speed and accuracy versus how it runs afterwards using this new integrator that we've presented. So this is what the Runga Kutta fourth order method looks like, known as the classical method. Uh, this was the one actually developed by Runga. Kutta developed something very similar to this, but with slightly different weights and, and determining the g's, the slopes at somewhat different intervals or, or points within the interval. Uh, but both are fourth order accurate, and this has come to be known as the Runga Kutta fourth order. Anyway, that concludes our video. I hope you found something useful in it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so others can get to watch it too. Or better still, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and you'll be notified of all new video releases. If you have any questions or any comments, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.